Welcome to another GIS Studio 58A session. My name is Twyla Whelan and today we'll be talking about protecting yourself online. I have with me Director of Information Security and Assurance, am I correct? That's correct. Mr. Rory Ebanks and Information Security Consultant, Mr. Lamar Lilly. Welcome yes. both of you. And yes. they are from Simtai Consulting Limited, an information technology advisory and assurance company. Yes, I was doing some research as well. Good research. Okay, uh, so don't forget, you can send in your comments and your questions uh, in the comment section below. And, you know, let us know what you're thinking about the conversation and ask away because we need to clarify just for you. Um, so we're going to start. It is October. It is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. And we want to know, you know, how to be safe online. Why is it so important, especially now, you know, to be particularly safe online? Who'd like to start? Well, I guess I'll start. Okay. So, <laughs> In the 21st century, the internet, the cyberspace, as it's known as, is very popular. Everything now is going towards the trend of having it automated or being online. So knowing what you should do to protect yourself is very important in this day and age. Okay. So in terms of the misconceptions, there are some, there are some things that persons may think that, hey, if I just ensure that I don't post certain things, people won't find certain things out. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the misconceptions that you've come across in the industry? Well, one of the biggest in, uh, misconceptions that I've come across is, you know, people always say, nobody not going to hack me. I mean, I have nothing to hide. That, those kind of things. But, you know, cyber criminals, once you have a password, an email, credit card information, they will target you. And let's say you don't have none of that. The fact that you're online means that they could potentially use your online presence to carry out other attacks. And attacks in terms of what are some of the, you mentioned your email and what are some of the other areas? Passwords, your, your banking information. So some of the attacks that they could carry out is one of the, the popular ones you see on social media, catfishing. So this is where like if they get access to any of your social media accounts, they could then go on and portray your image mm -hmm as themselves so asking um other your, your friends personal information is like hey um i don't remember what my favorite pet was back in high school i remember we had a discussion those kind of things to get information from your friends through your account and this is because you're like nobody not gonna hack me so you weren't uh you you weren't practi practicing proper security et etiquette et etiquettes uh, to have a, a secure password and those kind of things you mentioned catfishing. Catfishing sounds like phishing, just in general, in terms of like phishing emails. Could you mm -hmm. distinguish between the two? All right. So uh, phishing. So when when you hear the word phishing, we're talking strictly emails. Yeah. So it's just P H. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For phishing, by the way. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so when when you hear phishing, it's always email attacks, and this is where you get like a, a, a email that seems legit in most cases. And it will ask you for sensitive information like your email, your username, password, that kind of stuff. Catfishing, on the other hand, is when somebody impersonates you online. So let's say I get access to your social media account or I create a new social media account. And I say, hey, I am you. That's how catfishing works. Some people may not see that as a big deal. I mean, in regard to impersonating being an imposter then how mm -hmm. can this affect me in the real world well picture this if i pretend to be you then i can pretty much manipulate other persons so they can provide information to me that should be sensitive to you mm -hmm. i can also perform activities acting as you these could be illegal activities what if I sent a lot of, so we're talking about social media, no? Mm -hmm. So what if I created a Facebook account, pretended to be you, sent out a lot of friend requests, got back these friend requests being accepted, and then I said, click on this link. This is using social media now to do phishing. Persons click on this link and they get, let's say get hacked. Mm -hmm. Something bad happens. Who are they going to say causes? They're going to say you causes, mm -hmm. but yet you're there and you're saying, but I don't, I don't know this account. So that's one of the ways that it can affect you personally. You know, as you mentioned that the other day, my friend sent me a message on Facebook saying, hi, 
perhaps you may have received a message from me regarding X, Y, Z. That wasn't me. And I thought she was joking. I was like, what are you talking about? She's <laughs> like, apparently there was some duplication of her account mm. and persons were sending out messages from it. So apparently this is a very real thing. And it's interesting that catfishing and phishing emails yes. in a way are interconnected. Yes. So is it that the whole the thing is evolving or was this always there? It's, it's continuously evolving because as the attackers grow, they'll get smarter and smarter. Because remember, it's a continuous process. So... so so we're always on the defense, but yet they are evolving to be more creative and find different ways and techniques to, to try and bypass basic security. And just to add to that, one of the, the other biggest misconceptions, and this is targeted to business, when they are coming up with security controls, they believe in, in most cases that if I, if, if I get a firewall to block certain requests, I'm good. But as Rory says here, the attackers, they're always coming up with new ways to break things. So mm -hmm. security is never complete. There's never any air gap solution to say that once you have this in place, you'll be safe. Clearly, you are the IT professionals. <clears throat> what can regular people do to keep up with this evolving in industry, I suppose? I mean, crime. So they, they have to continuously be up to date. So, for example, this session will, will give them some insight of some of the attacks, some of the techniques being utilized. But even us as cybersecurity professionals are in the dark sometimes because mm -hmm. every single second something new is being created. A new attack occurs, a new technique is created, some way of bypassing an existing control. So it's, it's always good to be on your, your social media accounts to get some information and not just any type of information. So ensure that you're getting it from reputable sources. Okay. So I suppose research is, is necessary on the part of mm -hmm. the person using social media. Now, earlier we were discussing something about old accounts. Okay. Is it dangerous to have these old accounts just lingering around? You know, you're not really using them. Maybe you forgot your password. How dangerous is that? Well, that's, that's very dangerous. Oh. Yeah, because uh, let's say you created that account in 2007. Most persons know that 2007 was probably the worst time to be on the internet because that's where really that, that year was the year when like cyber criminals and cyber attacks got like a whole lot of publicity. So let's say you had a Facebook account from 2007 and you've never been on it from that time. That password is probably compromised. It, it is compromised. So I, even if it's not compromised, more than likely it's a weak password. Yes. Okay. And imagine you probably not remembering that you set that weak password for your password back in 2007 and set it again for a very recent account. Mm -hmm. Attackers can now use that all information, so to speak, to compromise you today. I'm happy that you mentioned passwords because we have a whole segment to discuss passwords. How would you make a password strong or hack proof? Well, Again, <laughs> there's no, <laughs> there's no way to make it hack proof. Yes. Yeah, let's not say hack proof. Okay, let's, let's not make say it hack proof. strong yes. or more Stronger resilient or complex. to the attacks of hackers mm -hmm. or complex. Yes. How do you do that? Well, so something I realized that persons take passwords for granted, not in the sense of complexity, but something as simple as you're typing your password and somebody's behind you watching. That's called sh shoulder surfing. So somebody, you're, you're typing your password on your computer and let's say your coworker is right behind you saying, oh, your password is password123. Cool. Mm. More, most of the times, so attackers aren't really persons, let's say, way over Russia, trying, sitting in a dark room, hacking away. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's just your friends, your coworkers and all of that. So be mindful of who's watching when you're typing in your password. First and foremost. Is it safe? I feel like I know the answer to this question, but is it safe to have the same password for all your accounts? I no. ask this with a very guilty heart. No, no. let's let's trust that one. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> so And don't. also do not write down your passwords. Yes. Okay. Yes. Do not write it down on a paper on a, a sticky, sticky note. note. Yeah. And Put it right on your desk. Mm -hmm. Do not do that. But in an age where there are so many different things that you need an account for, 
how are you going to remember all these different passwords? What uh, do you recommend? So what I always tell people to get is a password manager. Now, a password manager is a software that you can use to generate complex passwords. Now, complex passwords are passwords that are at least 10 digits. I know if you look online, they'll say eight, but it's, it's, it's kind of 2018 now. And with computing power, eight digits is still taking no time to crack. So at least 10 digits long, um, 10 characters long, have some numbers, have uppercase and lowercase, and have special characters. Okay, so the password manager generates the password? Yes, they will generate the password Does for you save and saves it. So what if it's hacked? Well, <laughs> that's the, 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 the other mm -hmm. issue there. So, 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 so that's the risk, but yeah. if you have a good password manager, it will have additional security in place. Mm -hmm. So for example, Yes, you have to use a password to get into the password manager, but it also has what's called two-factor authentication. So it doesn't only depend on a password, but it also depends on something else that you have in place. So for example, you might get a text message with a, an additional layer or additional code that you must enter to gain access. It might also send you a notification to say that someone else is trying to log in to this password manager and then it blocked it and it asked you to approve it. So there are additional security controls put in place whenever you utilize a, a good password manager. Mm -hmm. Are there any types of password managers that are popular that you could recommend? Well, I personally use LastPass and KeePass. I, I prefer uh, key pass because I like to keep my, my things like offline. Mm -hmm. So I use the portable version and last, uh, last pass it has an online version where you can store your passwords in the cloud. But, uh, so I like, I, I like key pass. Okay, I understand. Version, yeah. No problem. So how often should you really be changing your password? Should you be waiting on the computer to tell you you have six days? Or is there a routine for changing your password? Well, unless you are, you're in a, an organization that practices password policies, uh, you'll never get a message saying that you know, change your password in six days. Mm -hmm. but for the average person? Yes, for the average person, ideally, it's 30 days. But 60 to 90 days works. Okay. I don't recommend you having the same password beyond 90 days. So in regard to passwords and errors that you've come across or complaints that persons normally have. What are some of the biggest problems with, with persons and passwords in terms of making them? Because I know most of the times we may pick like a person's name mm -hmm. or a year. What do you find that persons normally do that's incorrect? So what I've realized is persons, because they don't want to try hard to remember or to forget their password, they always choose things close to them. So credit card pins, I can guarantee you <laughs> that most persons use either their birth year, the, their birth year, either forwards or backwards, the month they were born and the day as their, their credit card password. And that's because those things are easy to remember. Mm -hmm. So that's the issue. Persons want to create passwords that are easy to remember. But having a password that is easy to remember does not necessarily mean that it's safe. Because, again, turn back to social media. If I go onto your social media and say, hey, your birth year is this, and I somehow get access to your credit card, that's the first thing I'm going to try, your birth year. So what persons can try to make their passwords complex and rememberable is trying to use a passphrase. So the passphrase could be, I love dogs. Or abracadabra. Or, uh, well, no. Or not. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, I love dogs. And in, those, I in that I love dogs, you could probably substitute some of the letters for numbers and special characters. Okay, I think I'm going to personally use that one. Don't, don't use no, I love no, dogs. No, no, not that one, <laughs> but the tip. The yes. tip you could, of the you phrase. You can also use songs also. Yes. Oh, Especially cool. Jamaican songs. Mm -hmm. It's very complex when you replace or substitute some of the, the characters. Okay. So, for example, if you have an O, you replace it with a zero. Mm -hmm. Oh, I understand. And you can add numbers at the end also to oh. just increase the complexity. 
Mr. Ebanks, would you face the camera, please? Our Facebook viewers would love to see your face. <laughs> We're getting your profile. Okay, and mentioning our Facebook viewers, I'd like to send a shout out to Kiki K. Marie watching from Dallas. Hi, Kiki. It's nice for you to join us. Thank you so much for joining. And Yvonne Gentles, thank you as well. Hello, Maureen Smith, our person who's always commenting. Uh, I think we have a question here. Uh, this is from Melissa Green. She says, good afternoon, Studio 58A. The recent situation with Facebook and their tokens that caused them to log out thousands of users. Mm -hmm. Can you explain in layman terms what exactly happened there and the possible implications? All right. So the initial story was 50 million accounts were compromised in, in the Facebook uh, incident there. Now, after a few weeks, Facebook came out and said that to further in investigations, they realized that it's actually 30 million. But I was reading an article yesterday that said that Facebook uh, made some amendments to that report and saying it's now 29 million. Yeah, so the final story for now is that it, it's not 50 million accounts that were compromised, it was, it was actually 29. Okay, compromised how? What does compromise yes, mean in so this case? Yes, so getting to that. So mm -hmm. what the attackers did in this case is that they used the viewers feature to get access tokens to other person's account. So let, so Facebook had this feature. When you go on your account, on your profile, you'd see a button that says view as. And when you click view as, you could view your account as somebody else that's probably not your friend. So you want to see how somebody who's not your friend see your Facebook page, somebody who's a friend see your Facebook page. So you could, mm. you know, gauge what kind of information you want to share. So the attackers, what they found out is when you use that view as, um, feature, it would disclose your token, your access tokens in the requests. So they found out that they could just go on a, a bunch of accounts, click the viewers uh, button and steal the tokens and then potentially use it for whatever Unscrupulous reason. reasons. Yes. What exactly are access tokens? So access tokens are just like long keys or well you can call them passwords to some extent but they're really just long keys that you know when you make a request the server will ask you hey uh, do you have access and then when you say yes the server say okay where's your access token and then you put it and in. then you provide it and that's and that happens automatically so you as the user you don't see all of that oh okay yes. uh, so 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 this was an uh, application fault yes or design so the token is pretty much a key that's used to authenticate the user, to say that this user should have access to mm -hmm. this resource. So as Lomar stated, the key was was easily compromised or viewed in the state. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you so much for answering that. Uh, Melissa, I hope that clarified your question or, or made it easier for you to understand. Um, before we got to Melissa's question, we, we sort of started talking about credit cards mm -hmm. and I think this would be a good lead in to talking about shopping online. Yes. And, you know, possibly leaving things in your trolley. And, you know, yes. could you tell me some of the dangers involved with shopping online? So shopping online is a very convenient thing to do today. So it's, it's very important that you are aware of all of the security implications that could, could affect your actions online. So I always say, you know, when you're using, when you're shopping online, make sure that it's from your device one and you're on a secure network. So I, I realize that the government is now pushing out um, free Wi-Fi to the public. So I wouldn't advise you going onto the public's Wi-Fi to do shopping online because it's not safe. Because you could leave information and somebody could yes. take advantage of it, am I correct? Yes. And you don't know who else is on that yes. network. Okay, so let's say you're at home and you're on your phone and you're shopping, how can your details be protected? Are there things that you can do to protect yourself in that space? Mm -hmm. So like something, something I practice is I try not to save my, my credit card information on the account, even if it's Amazon, because in the very likely event that Amazon does become compromised or like, and they say that credit card information were leaked, I know that for a fact that I'm safe because I didn't save my, my, my information on that account. So while you're shopping online from home, uh, you probably will not want to, might not want to save your credit card information online. Another thing 
is you have to be mindful of the URL. So the URL is that is the text at the top of the browser. So when you're checking it, you need to make sure that it says HTTPS and secure. Because sometimes you'll see HTTPS, but it will say connection not secure. So you need to make sure that you're on a, a secure connection when you're shopping online. A website being trustworthy, does mm -hmm. that equate to the same thing as it being secure? Not necessarily. Explain. So Amazon is trustworthy, but I'm, I'm sure that they have had security breaches in the past. Mm -hmm. So not because they say that, oh, Amazon is the number one shopping, uh, online shopping site means that it's secure. They, they, they will try everything to make sure that, you know, all the security measures are there to prevent breaches. So, but yeah, you also want to stick to the popular ones because as I said just now, the popular websites, they will, they will try and make their application more secure. And let's say you go and you see uh, shoponline.com. You've never heard of this, but because they have a product you want, you just go and you type mm. in information. Especially on social media, you see those ads pop up saying, yes. like, oh, this looks cool. <laughs> yes. I want to feel work in my ear. So, yeah, okay. But in reality, uh, another big issue, even though some persons may not refer to it as a cybercrime, uh, is the use of automated telemachines, ATMs mm. and so the like. Uh, first of all, is ATM hacking considered a cybercrime? Yes, I, I would classify it as a cyber crime because really and truly the ATM is connected to a network. So it's the ATM is just a computer that's on a network. So it's a part of the, the internet or the internal network. So if it gets compromised, it is a cyber crime. Okay, so perhaps you could share with us some of the proper ways to use an ATM. Yeah, so first of all, <laughs> when you go into an ATM, lock the door. Always lock the door. It, 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 may, it may seem trivial as a, a, a security uh, control, so to speak, but always lock the door as soon as you're going to the ATM. The next thing that you should do is the key, the, the card holder that you put your card in, tug on it a bit to see if it's firm. Because sometimes people go in and they add what these what what you call skimming devices that when when you put when you're inserting the card it skims your information yes so you you need to make sure that when you go into the atm you tug on that thing to make sure that it's firm another thing is you can use your hands to just uh, feel the top part of the key the keypad if you find any holes there it may be a camera there, or it might just be a screw hole. So if you feel a hole, you, you do further investigation so to make sure that, that that's actually a screw hole and not somebody went there and drill a hole and stick a camera up there to get the, the password as you're entering it. So essentially, these are some things that persons can look at beforehand to tell. You mentioned something about jiggling the card. Mm -hmm. So is it when you put in the card, it's supposed to jiggle it, or you jiggle it before? No, you no, jiggle before. it before. Oh, I'm just checking. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's a slot. How are you going to jiggle it? <laughs> you just hold it and shake it. OK, I will, I will try this. Pull it. And tell Facebook if it works. Lightly. Oh, Lightly. you don't want to break it, right? Don't break it. Break it, you bought it, people. <laughs> and if you are just joining us, uh, thank you for tuning in. We are talking to Persons from same time, Mr. Lomar Lilly and Mr. Rory Ebanks. That's correct. We're talking to them about protecting yourself online. Mm -hmm. So, now, I remember in our meeting that we discussed, you know, some of the new developments mm -hmm. in hacking and cyber crimes. So, could you talk to us a little bit about some of the new things that they are coming up with? As you said, the hackers are evolving every day. So. How do you want to start and then continue? <laughs> All right. So, so as I stated, Security is always evolving. Yes. Some of the new techniques that are they're using is is it's it's very out of the norm. So even in terms of application weaknesses, they're creating what what we term zero day attacks. So they're doing research on various applications, finding weaknesses in those applications. So for example, we gave the Facebook as a common common utilized application and yet almost 50 million persons was compromised because of this. So this would be a zero day attack. Mm -hmm. It happened because of cyber attacks doing research and exploiting that application. Mm -hmm. There are common phishing attacks, but 
when we heard phishing before, it was just general terms and we had easy ways of identifying phishing, such as misspelled information, the email address it's coming from not looking legitimate, but the attackers are, are getting very smart and they're evolving now. So they're doing what's called spear phishing, mm -hmm. where the email itself looks exactly like you would think it's coming from a legitimate source. The email address seems the same, the context seems the same, the information they're asking for seems legitimate. So these are just some of the types of techniques that they're ut utilizing. Which mm. ones are really popular in Jamaica that you've gotten complaints about? Fishing, fishing, fishing is always popular. Fishing. Mm -hmm. But recently, there's this. There's it. It's been around for a while, but very recently, it it it, it pop up again. The use of Microsoft Office mm -hmm. through spreading malware. Mm -hmm. So w how it works is you would get a real word document, a real PowerPoint document. You open it, and when you open it it executes some malicious code. Now, what Microsoft has done to kind of mitigate against this is when you open, now if you open any of the, the Office programs, you'll see a little yellow bar at the top saying um, enable editing. So when you click on that button and you say you enable it, if you are not sure that this is a safe document, that's actually when any malicious script is in that document would, would execute. So the, the script is something that's built into Microsoft because of usability to make their, their programs more, more interactive with like developers. So they're called macros. Yes. So attackers now they have found ways to weaponize these macros to download and infect uh, malware, in, infect users with malware. So at the point of you opening this document, mm -hmm. is there anything you can do after? Well, the code is run. Unless you have a, 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 a reputable antivirus protection software and something that most Jamaicans don't really understand is antivirus are antivirus softwares. They're very important. We tend to go for anything that's free and free does not necessarily mean that that's the best solution. Uh, we, we have our smartphones, but how much of us actually have an antivirus protect on our phones, especially if you're using it as your main uh, device on the internet, downloading games, downloading apps, browsing on the internet. So that, that's something I've realized that persons don't really take serious. Help so us to take it seriously then. Yes. Could you tell us a little bit more about the type of security controls and mechanisms and anti reputable antivirus software that we could access? Well, for free? <laughs> I, no, you know what? <laughs> Let's not just stick to the free mentality. For free, exactly. not for free. We just want to know. We want to keep the options open. Yeah, so the 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 software I like to recommend is malware bytes. They 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 stay up to date with a lot of the the zero day uh, attacks, as Rory mentioned early. So as soon as an attack drop, they normally add it to their, their database. Other antivirus software does uh, do that as well. But uh, Malwarebytes, the free version does that by default because they're, they're pushing for, because what the developers of that software realize is that the market in the antivirus uh, se uh, sector, they are more selling than protecting. So unless you can buy Avas for $300, then mm -hmm. you'll never be truly secure. Sure, they have, sure, Malwarebytes have uh, features that you'd have to pay for to get, but by default, they try to provide you with an up-to-date um, database uh, where when, when you download for free, you click scan, it will go through and scan your machine and uh, remove any virus it, it, it finds. Okay, that was pretty clear. There was something I wanted to ask earlier mm -hmm. in regards to catfishing accounts. What do you do if you find a duplicate account of your own? What do you actually do? All right, so it all depends on which platform you find it. So, for example, if you find it on Facebook, mm -hmm. Facebook has the mechanisms in place that you can utilize to actually report these incidents. Mm -hmm. So you can utilize Facebook and say that, okay, this is my legitimate account, but I've found a similar account that I think I'm being catfished. And then they can do the investigation and take it down. 
you yourself also can do additional checks. So you can go on the internet, do a Google search, search for your profile and see if it's coming up on additional sites. Then you can report it to local organizations here where they can also do some checks, but it's always best to go to the, the source. So yeah. Facebook, if you're if you if you have identified that your Facebook account has been catfished, then go directly to Facebook. I see. Yeah. We've talked about uh, shopping online, passwords, new developments, uh, hacking in general. Is there any other area of attack that persons normally, you know, they're they're compromised that we may not have spoken about? Social engineering for sure. Yes. Oh, what is this? So social engineering is using non-IT techniques to try and, and gather information from you. So for example, in this interview, I could be asking you a few simple questions mm -hmm. like your date of birth, where you're from, which school you went to, and I'll be get, getting a lot of information from you. And more than likely, these are security questions that are tied to your banking information. Yes. Because they typically ask you these questions. So yes. right there, I will be getting a lot of information from you. So it's similar to phishing, but it's using more soft skills. So I could mm -hmm. be doing this through a phone call or just a simple conversation. I might meet you at a conference and just start asking you questions. So these are some of the types of techniques that attackers are using. So Mr. Ebanks. Mr. Lilly, mm -hmm. were you trying to extract <laughs> <laughs> information from me earlier? So, so, well, we extracted some before we yes, came here. before we came here. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is funny. But does that mean we have to be wary of everyone that asks us these questions? Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. Uh, something I like to do for fun. Mm -hmm. If For fun? Yes. If I'm meeting you for the first time or I know you for years and we're there, we're in a social situation, and where they I'll just break the question. So, what's your mother's maiden name? <laughs> and you'd be surprised. That is disturbing. Yes, but, but <laughs> you a disturbing question. But you'd be surprised. Like, even if I don't get a response there and then, further down, I still get it. Okay, what about privating your account? Let's say you're on Instagram and you have a private Instagram account. How does, how does that help? Does it help? To some extent, but. How to some extent? Because if, if Instagram, the company itself, has a breach. Your account information is still out there. And and even for private accounts. Yes. Even okay, for that's important account. to know because people mm -hmm. believe that privating is like a, a fix all, but is it a band aid then? Could you call it a band aid? It's a mitigation strategy. That can fail. That can yeah, fail. It's, it's not foolproof. Yeah. Because someone could compromise one of your friends that you have already accepted. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we have another comment. I, I didn't hear the person's name. Nadine Powell, hello. Uh, nice of you to join us. And thank you so much for continuing to watch and for enjoying the program. All right. So we have pretty much been through most of the major areas, mm -hmm. especially those affecting Jamaicans, I would say. Correct. Yes. Uh, are there any final thoughts in terms of telling persons, you know, look, this is what to do if you feel compromised? Any final thoughts from both of you? All right. So... If you feel that you have been compromised, so for example, uh, your, your banking information, you feel that, um, that you were compromised, you report it to the bank as soon as possible. You don't give that any time. If you think that your social media accounts were compromised, you can e either uh, report it to the, the company or disable your account and just call at a loss, move on. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Banks. Well, it, it's 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 similar. So, if you think that you're compromised, just for example, if your machine is compromised. So we have been speaking a lot about application on social media. But if you think your computer is compromised, mm -hmm. definitely stop using that m machine, wipe it, and ensure that even before you stop using, disconnect from the internet, mm -hmm. and then wipe it. You mentioned wiping. What is this? Just very So quickly. this is erasing all information that is currently on that computer or on that device that you're utilizing. So it could be a phone, ensure that it's formatted. So other persons, it might be wipe or reference as formatted. Or a fracture reset. And another, it, it, it may not seem as a, a security control at the forefront, but backing up your, your content, keeping a copy of it somewhere else, 
that also helps. So in the event that your device get compromised, you can easily wipe it and say, John, no. <laughs> me lose everything. That's how it go. Better that load and um, have your personal information. Yes. All right. So we do have another question here before we go from Dawkins Gavin. Hi, Mr. Gavin. How safe are mobile wallets? It's mobile wallets. So mm -hmm. I've I've used one uh, back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, they are okay, depending from which uh, company you're, you're using it from, but. As as we we said earlier that no security control is 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 final, so even if they have top notch security, a zero day exploit could drop for that wallet today, and everybody using that wallet could be compromised. Mm -hmm. okay. So you just have to be mindful of what you're using it for and how you're using it and what information you 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 have saved in that uh, okay. application. Thank so, you for so, that. so a good comment to say is security is a point in time. Mm -hmm. So you can be secure today and in a few seconds, the application is broken. Or even how you approach things is insecure. So it, all, it only takes a minute or a second then? It only takes a second. Okay, uh, we have a question here again from Nadine Powell. Hello, Miss Powell. Instagram, Facebook and others are often used for social media marketing. What advice would you give us as entrepreneurs for staying safe? Don't click on the links. <laughs> <laughs> so you can view can view the information, but don't click on the links. Mm. That's that's always a yeah, good that's, practice. That's that's true. Mm. I've 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 been reading about what it's now called malvertising. So it's where you would go on this on social media and you see ads like, oh, buy this sponge and it will evaporate the Caribbean Sea. <laughs> It's really th those kind of ads you see are, are by this telescope and you can zoom to see the moon. Mm. And because I those are those. so compelling, persons okay. normally click those links. And when you click those links, you actually download a virus or a malware in the background. To in, uh, and that infects your device. So it's always okay. important to, to practice and train persons to be secure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So security isn't only technical. Yes. So we're speaking a lot of IT items, but we as the individual has to practice safe security also. Okay, we also have another question from Nadine. How often do you recommend that information is backed up? It can be real time. Yeah. Okay. So you have tools that actually performs automatic backups. So once a file is changed, it's backed up automatically. Mm -hmm. Oh, and another question from Andre Palmer. Hello, Andre. Wearable devices are becoming a big thing. Yes. Fitbits, Apple Watches, and the like. Any best practices around these devices? So, get this, guys. Keep them up to date. Frame, frame, what do they call them? Firmware updates. They're important because in most cases, these firmware updates are actually patching security issues. So if you have a smartwatch, uh, or any of those wearable devices, smart wearable devices. You want to keep them up to date. Another thing you want to do is if you're not using them and they're connected via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, disconnect them. Keep them only connected if you need to use them. Okay. So, yeah, that's what I would say. All right, and before we go, I'd like to say hello to Baron Pierce, who is watching. Kiki Kemery from Dallas. Uh, Maureen Smith, Cecilia Dallas Martinez, Julie Latouche, Shamar Grant, Michael Philibert, and Dawkins Gavin. Thanks again for your question. Um, okay, read that one to me. No problem. Nadine, this is the last question, Nadine. <laughs> We're putting our foot down. Okay, what's the question? With Instagram, one of the objectives is to increase followers, but how can we be aware of hackers posing as legitimate people? Okay, so uh, there you, you can do what's called image reversing, and you can you, you do it with like Google Google Images. Mm -hmm. So what cyber criminals tend to do is they they use photos that are already being used on the internet. So you can right click on that link on that image mm -hmm. and select copy image URL or copy image address paste that in Google image and if you get a lot of uh, 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 results you know that this account might not be 
an actual user, but it could be somebody posing as somebody else one, or it's just a fake account. Oh, so, so that's could you give those steps one last time? All right, so you find the, the, the account, you right click on the, the image, that should pop up a little um, dialog drop down. You click on either copy image address or copy image URL. And you go to Google Images, and there's this part that asks that when you click it, it says uh, paste URL here. You paste the URL there, and when you click search, if you get a lot of results, search results, then you may want to be cautious with that account. Okay, thank you so much for that. Yes. And I believe we've reached the end of this session. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming. I really appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thanks for having me. Thank us. you very much. And before we go, we're asking you to provide information just in case people need to contact you or SimTai. So go ahead, Mr. Banks. Okay, so you can visit our website. So it's SimTai.com, S Y M P T A I.com, or you can send us an email at info at SimTai.com. Okay. And don't forget, if you do have more questions or comments, you can still leave them in the comment section. We'll go back through and answer individually. And of course, we'll have the persons from Simtai on call so we can relate to them your questions. Don't forget that you can tune into future JIS Studio 58A sessions by keeping up with our Facebook. That's Jamaica Information Service, as you're seeing. Um, also keep up with us on Twitter at JS News on Twitter, Instagram at JS Voice. And of course, you can continue interacting with us on Facebook, as said before, Jamaica Information Service. That's it for this week's, well, today, because we have another one coming up tomorrow. So please tune in for that Studio 58A session. I'm Twyla Whelan, and it's been a pleasure talking to you, gentlemen, yes. and taking you. your questions, Nadine Powell, uh, and everyone else. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day.